Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com, and today what we're going to do is embark on a journey of learning about fractions, which is one of the most important topics that you'll ever study in math, uh, and that's the concept of fractions. So if you ever had any problems with fractions in the past, or if fractions have kind of confused you, or working problems with fractions have kind of been something that you didn't enjoy because it was confusing to you, then take a deep breath and realize you're in the right place. Just erase everything you thought you ever knew about fractions and follow me step by step through these lessons. And what we'll do is start at the very beginning and work our way up skill by skill so that you're not gonna only understand how to do fractions, but you'll build your skills and you'll build your confidence. And that's the most important thing in math and in science. So what we're going to do in this section is begin by talking about a review of basic fraction concepts. By this point, you've all been exposed to what a fraction generally is, but it's always good to do a little review to uh, solidify concepts. So in a nutshell, a fraction is basically a way for you to write a number that expresses something that's less than one. That's what it's for. I mean, if I have a pen here, this is a pen. It's one pen, right? If I grab another uh, guy here, I have two pins. And grab another one, I have three, four, five, six pins, right? But what if I want to talk about less than one pin? What if I want to break this guy in half and express half of this pin? Well, what if I want to cut this, this pin in quarters and express one quarter of, of this pin? So see, those are fractions. Those are ways to write down the number to tell me when I have less than one whole unit of something. So you can talk about pens, or you can talk about pizzas, or you can, talk in, you can talk about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but in all cases, you're trying to write down that fraction that tells you when you have something less than one. So if you want to write that down in words, what you might see your teacher talk about, um, a fraction, a lot of ways that you'll see it written down, is part over whole. Right, so you remember this from, from basic fractions that you probably learned earlier. You have this fraction bar, there's something on top, there's something on the bottom, and this is basically a uh, part, so this is how many of what you have, and this is how many um, slices or, or divisions of something you have. And so the easiest way to really drill that in is for a simple example. So for instance, let's say that I have you know a pie or a pizza or something, that's a circle, could be a cake, right? So right now I have one cake, or one pizza, or one pumpkin pie, whatever, right? But let's say I want to represent something less than one. So let's say I have a friend over hanging out with me, and so I cut this pie, or this pizza, or whatever it is, into four equal pieces. So obviously I can give one piece to each of my four friends, and we'll each have an equal amount of this pizza. But let's say, just to kind of illustrate this, let's say I cut this pizza into four pieces, and then I I give only one of the four pieces away to my friend because it may, maybe I'm hungry and I want to keep the rest of it. So I want to give this away to a friend. So how do you write that down in terms of math? Right? So the fraction, right? you would express this as a fraction because I don't, I'm not giving him a whole pizza or a whole cake. I'm giving him a part of it. What part am I giving him? I'm giving him, I'm giving him one piece out of how many pieces do I have? I have four pieces. So this is the fraction one-fourth, right? So when you have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you cut it into four equal pieces, then the four goes on the bottom because that's how many uh, entire pieces you have in the whole sandwich, or in this case, the whole pizza. But what I'm offering to give somebody is not the whole sandwich. I'm only giving them one of those four pieces or one of those four slices. So the part that I have is only one piece. So you see this one-fourth is representing less than one whole pizza here, or one whole cake. It's representing one out of four pieces. So that's what that means. So let's say we had, as an example, another example, uh, let's say we have a candy bar. Okay. Now this candy bar is rectangular, so I'm going to draw a nice long candy bar. You see, when you talk about fractions, you don't have to deal with circular things. It could be anything. Anything that you can cut up, you can talk about as a fraction. Now let's say that this um, that this candy bar, I again want to give some of this candy bar, I only have one candy bar, but I want to give some of it to a friend. So I divide it up, let's just say, into four equal pieces. This is four equal pieces, okay? Now let's say this time I'm not terribly hungry, so I, I really want to give my friend most of this candy bar. So I give him this piece, 
I give him this piece, that's the second piece, I give him the third equal piece. And I'm going to keep this piece for myself, all right? So how much of this candy bar do I actually give to my friend? Well, how many parts am I giving him? I have three parts here. And how many parts, uh, uh, whole parts do I have in the entire candy bar? One, two, three, four. So you see, I give him three out of four pieces. That's what a fraction is. This is representing less than one candy bar. It's not a whole candy bar, it's less than that. I'm giving him three out of four pieces. So that's the fraction three-fourths. Now is a good time to review the special names that we have for the top and the bottom of this fraction. When you have a fraction, the top number is always called the numerator. I know it's a big fancy sounding word, but it's called numerator. And the bottom number is always called the denominator. Right, you can kind of think of denominator, denominator being on the bottom, denominator on the bottom. So you can kind of get that. And then numerator is the top number. So over in this fraction, the three is called the numerator and the four is called the denominator. And so that's just a term. So what I want to do next is give you one more example with fractions just to kind of refresh your memory what we're talking about. So let's say we have another pie, because I love to eat pie. All right, and this pie, we're not going to cut it into four pieces like we did up here. We're going to actually cut it into eight pieces. So the easiest way to do that is to slice it across the middle, right, and then slice it straight up and down. That gives us four pieces. And then to get to eight pieces, I'm going to crisscross and slice this way, and then crisscross and slice this way. And if we count everything, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's eight pieces of pie total. So I have one pie, but I'm cutting it into eight pieces. Now let's say that I'm generous and I'd like to give my neighbor three of these pieces. So if this is one piece that I give to this person, this is piece number two. These are all supposed to be the same size. And this is piece number three. My question to you is, what fraction of pie am I giving to my neighbor? What fraction of pie am I giving to my neighbor? Well, what you do is you look part out of whole. How many parts, how many pieces of pie am I giving this person? I'm giving him three pieces. So I put my fraction bar. How many total pieces of pie do I have? I have eight pieces. We talked about that. So it's eight. So three eighths is the answer here. Three out of eight pieces. And that is mostly what I want to accomplish in this section. It's a great review of the concept of what a fraction is. A fraction is just trying to give you the means to be able to describe when you have less than one of something. We all know if we have one, one pie or one cake or two basketballs or three pumpkins or five watermelons, we know, we know how to count watermelons. But what happens if you have less than a watermelon? What if I'm only give, gonna give this person you know, two thirds of a watermelon? That would be two out of three pieces. If I cut that watermelon into three pieces and give two pieces away, that would be two out of three pieces, two thirds, that's another fraction. In all of these cases, the numerator is the top number, the bottom number is the denominator, and this is a good introduction to fractions. So make sure you understand this topic. Make sure it's very under understandable, very at the forefront of, of your understanding there, and then meet me on into the next section where we will continue learning about fractions and how to work with them.